Hey YouTube, The Thought Generator here. Today I wanted to show you my CO2 carbonator, tell you a little bit of how I built it and how I use it. Uh, I had two things in mind when I wanted to make this. First one being, I wanted it to be cheap. None of us want to spend money when we're building this stuff. Uh, the second thing was I needed it to be a little portable. I didn't, uh, I've watched other YouTube videos where people are uh, putting them in closets or running them through lines through the countertops. And I didn't want anything like that. I just wanted to be nice and portable, something I could put on the counter, use it when I needed to, and otherwise put it away in the garage, down in the basement, wherever. First thing I did was try to locate a CO2 tank. Now these brand new were a little expensive, too much for my budget, so uh, I went uh, a lot of people just toss these out after done using them. A lot of brew makers use them and sometimes you can get them for free or next to nothing. So I watched local auction sites and eventually I found this one from a guy who used to brew his own beer. I was able to buy it off him for 35 bucks. Uh, he said it was about three quarters full when I filled it up there were about 800 pounds in it. So. I've been using it for quite a bit and I uh, haven't noticed even a drop in that. Next thing I needed to do was to get the regulator. I went to a local brew shop. They sold really nice regulators for about $75. Again, that's a little too much for what I wanted to spend. So I went down to Harbor Freight and down there they had a Chicago Electric had made a uh, Argon slash CO2 regulator. Uh, I bought that. Uh, it came, comes with an argon attachment, which you have to remove and replace with the CO2 fitting in order to attach to your CO2 tank. I just placed this in a vise, you know, real gently and used a lot of strength to get it off, but took off that fitting, put on the CO2 fitting. I used some Teflon tape about on each of these fittings just to uh, make sure I wasn't going to have any leaks. The argon regulator comes with a flow valve. And then instead of a pressure gauge, it has a liters per minute gauge on there. And when you're using CO2, you want it in PSI, pounds per square inch. That way you know how much pressure you're putting into your containers. Uh, I put it in the vise again. I removed that. And at Harbor Freight also, I was able to find a PSI gauge. It was a back-mounted fitting instead of a side-mounted, which would have been nicer, but it doesn't affect the, how it works. So I took the other gauge off, I put the PSI gauge on there. After that I bought a, you know, just 18 inches of reinforced tubing, used some hose clamps to attach it, and then on the end of it I put an air chuck on there. Uh, the air chuck was cheap and it made it real easy when attaching it to, or using it on uh, my carbonator caps. The brew shop that I went to had carbonator caps for a ball lock carbon or ball lock kegging system but they're twenty dollars a piece and that would have also been buying a different fitting instead of this air chuck so uh, fellow youtuber mike white uh, made these carburetor caps he used tubeless tire valves just picked them up at a local auto store came two in a pack for five bucks take a quarter inch drill bit drill it through a regular bottle cap and then that just attaches on both ends works real well so in order to use it, all you do is turn on the CO2 tank itself. Flow gauge shows what's, how much is in there. And then you go by the PSI gauge. Adjust that here. Um, I tried to do a lot of research on how much PSI to put into these plastic bottles. I wasn't really able to find a real safe zone, so that's all on you. But uh, I go about 55 PSI, seems to be the perfect one for me. And I've done it with 2 liter bottles, 20 ounce bottles. This here's a 1 liter bottle. So I really, the size I do. Uh, in order to use it, you just fill it about 3 quarters full. You want the fluid to be as cold as you can get it. Colder fluids are going to uh, help the CO2 devolve, dissolve into solution much easier. So you start off by taking your bottle about 3 quarters full and just squeeze out all the air that you can. This is going to allow for just CO2 to be in the bottle. Don't want anything else dissolved in there. And once you're all set up here, you just start to fill it up. Put the chuck on the valve until you don't hear air passing into the bottle anymore. And once it's there, you just give it a shake. As you shake this, you're going to notice that the bottle starts to collapse on itself as the CO2 moves into solution. So, 
Once you give that the first time, give it another go. Again, filling it up until you don't hear anything move. I find that three times is kind of what it takes to really get a good carbonation on there. Let's do it one more time here. Shake it up and then you're good to go. You can take it and here I'll just put it in a glass here. Release the carbonation. You can see quite a bit of fizzing in there already. And I should pour it into the glass. Plenty of CO2 there too. Now I just use it uh, on water mostly, kind of make your own seltzer, but you know, like I said, beer, soda, anything you you want. And, you know, plenty carbonated. Well, the tough part was building it. After it was built, uh, real easy. A couple of these were no problem whatsoever. I usually carbonate whatever I'm doing. Even if I'm making soda, I carbonate a two liter bottle. Afterwards, I take this cap off and put a regular soda bottle cap on there. And that's just like if you had uh, bought a two liter at the store of soda, took the cap off once, you know, it stays, stays carbonated. You know, if you keep it cold, it stays carbonated longer. The thought generator here, just showing you my CO2 setup. Uh, works real well. We love it here, so good luck to you if you want to build your own. You can probably get these parts even cheaper than I have. And once it's together, you can carbonate anything that you like. So good luck, everybody.